Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at Glendale Heights United Methodist Church. My name is John Chugart. I serve here as the pastor. I'm joined this morning by Amy Davis, our organist and choir director. I hope as you come into the feed that you'll greet one another, that you will um, give us a thumbs up or react in the comments if you can hear us well, if you can see us well. Um, I just hope that this next 30 minutes is a blessing for you as we read scripture and sing together and hear the word proclaimed. If you're watching later on YouTube, you won't be able to interact live with us, but I pray that this service later on will be a blessing for you as well. So as we come into this time of worship, I would invite you to get comfortable, grab your Bible and your hymnal if you have them with you. Uh, go ahead and invite the Holy Spirit into wherever you're worshiping from this morning and hear this prelude as we enter a time of worship together. So welcome again, if you're just joining us on the feed, to Glendale Heights United Methodist Church's virtual worship this morning. My name is John Schubert. I serve as a pastor here, and I'm joined this morning, as always, by Amy Davis, our organist and choir director. We're so glad that you're joining us either live or later on YouTube. And if you uh, would, go ahead and post your prayer requests, your celebrations, and your concerns in the chat, and we will uh, share those later on the screen as we pray together for one another. So over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, I hope that through singing and through prayer and through the proclamation of the word that you would have an experience with the living God this morning and that it would be a blessing for you and your family. So now as we enter into a time of singing, we'll start with hymn number 127, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah, and the words will be on the screen.
So we're going to enter into a time of prayer together. We're going to have a musical reflection. And while that's happening, I invite you to uh, take in some silence, to reflect on the musical piece, to spend some time in quiet prayer, and also to share your prayer requests, celebrations, and concerns in the chat so we, as a congregation, can pray for one another and to see the, the needs and the joys and the sorrows that are on each other's hearts. So I'd invite you into that space now. So this morning, as, um, as I read a few prayer requests that were sent throughout this week, I would invite you when I say, Lord, in your mercy, that you can respond from where you are, hear our prayers. So I, I don't think I see um, any posted on the chat. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I do know uh, Tom Warner sent out an email yesterday about Angie and Reed Babinek uh, to be in prayer for their family, Angie's uh, sister. Um, is dealing with COVID-19 and her father is um, in surgery or had surgery yesterday, I believe. So we lift up the Babinek family for healing and for recovery and for peace of mind for Angie and Reed and for the Lord's comfort. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our second prayer request this morning is that the Durham Community Preschool is going to be starting on September 1st, which is Tuesday and they are modifying their sort of daily schedule. They're gonna be mostly outside. And so we pray for all of the families and for the children and, and students and teachers in that program as they begin a new school year, a new, uh, well, I guess a new time to be in preschool together. So Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. So let's spend some time in prayer together. Almighty God, we give you thanks this morning for a new day, for the creation that we see around us, for all of the ways that we have seen you move in our lives, for the ways that you have blessed us. We give you thanks. And God, this morning, as we come together for a time of worship, we pray for an encounter with your Holy Spirit. We pray that through listening to music and to prayer and to scripture, that we might be moved and transformed and changed by your love. 
God, this morning we especially lift up Reed and Angie and Angie's sister and her father. We lift up the Durham Community Preschool. God, we lift up all of Durham Public Schools as they continue to navigate a a virtual semester. We lift up our essential health care workers and all the people who uh, continue to work in this time of pandemic. We pray for those who have been directly impacted, who have lost loved ones, who grieve, who are still recovering, who are still uh, fighting for their lives. And so, God, this morning we lift those things up to you, and we know, God, that you hear our prayers, that you listen as we pray to you. And so, God, help us to listen better to the needs of those around us, Help us listen better to our neighbors. Help us listen better for your spirit as it calls us to be your hands and feet in the world. And so we pray this in all things in the way your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now if you have your Bible handy, uh, we're going to be in Jeremiah this morning, Jeremiah 15, verses 15 through 21. I'll give you a minute to flip to that. The words will also be on the screen, and I'd invite you uh, to read that along with me. It says, O Lord, you know... Remember me and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, You shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. And this is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right, listen up. Jeremiah is um, one of the prophets, major prophets in the Old Testament, He was called by God to speak on God's behalf to the Israelites, to the people of God. In his call story in chapter 1, it says, Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. The whole book of of Jeremiah takes place in this time of great national turmoil, and the place where we find ourselves is when Jeremiah, the prophet of God, has been rejected by the people for what he has proclaimed, and he feels that that means he's been rejected by God. The Israelites, as a people, have suffered great losses. Their world has been flipped upside down, and even in the midst of all of that, God calls Jeremiah to use his voice to proclaim the hope that God 
would restore the people and their nation. The overarching theme of the book of Jeremiah is that the people weren't listening. At one point, Jeremiah says to the people, Hear this, O foolish and senseless people. You have eyes, but do not see, who have ears, but do not hear. Maybe if we look closely, that's one of the overarching problems throughout the entire Bible, that the Israelites have a problem listening to God. Maybe that's one of the overarching problems throughout all of human history. Maybe that's the overarching problem of the time we find ourselves in, in our present moment. Not listening has gotten the people of God into trouble over and over again. We just don't listen well. A quick look at the Hebrew word for listen in Scripture. Uh, the, the word is Shema. This may fa- sound familiar if, if you're familiar with Old Testament um, prayers, but one of the most famous passages in Scripture is called the Shema, and it's um, still to this day one of the, the most um, famous prayers of the Jewish faith. It's found in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. It says, Hear, O Israel, which starts in Hebrew, Shema Yisrael. And it says, The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and your gates. This is one of the fundamental prayers for the Israelites and for the Jewish people, and it is the first and greatest commandment that Jesus points to in the New Testament in the book of Mark. The word Shema in Hebrew means both to listen, but also to obey. There isn't a separate word obey in Hebrew. They are interconnected, listening and obeying. This word occurs at least 1,100 times in the Old Testament. And I think from that we can gather that listening and obeying is pretty important to God. Proverbs 19.20 says, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom for the future. It's so important, in fact, that there are verses in the Old and New Testament alike rebuking people for not listening. Certainly the prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel mentioned uh, things like this, not listening. Ezekiel says, Mortal, you are living in the midst of a rebellious house, who have eyes to see but do not see, who have ears to hear but do not hear. In Matthew, Jesus says, For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing. In Matthew 11, there's a call, Let anyone with ears listen. In John, it says, whoever is from God hears the words of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not from God. And then in Acts and Romans, there's similar sentiments all throughout Scripture. We just don't listen well. But remember that even when the people weren't listening, Jeremiah, the prophet, God called to speak on his behalf, encourages Jeremiah. In chapter 15, verse 19, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, If you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. There is still hope to turn back to God, that God can restore our own hardened hearts and our broken nation. There's still hope to listen and to obey. So this morning is a call to listen. Listen to people who are wiser and smarter than you. Listen to people who you feel you are wiser and smarter than. Listen to people you disagree with and listen to people you agree with. Listen to people with different political views than you. Listen to people with different theological perspectives than you. Listen to people with different life experiences than you. Listen to people with different ideas than you. And don't just hear it. 
Truly listen, engage, do the work. Let their words sink in. Let them impact you. Be empathetic. Avoid being defensive or apathetic or avoiding hard conversations altogether. Debate, wrestle, innovate, and create. And most importantly, listen for the voice of God. Listen for the voice of God speaking through the stories and the people and the poetry, the prophets and apostles in Scripture. Listen for the voice of Jesus in the Gospels. Listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit that is still speaking to us now. And don't just hear it, but Shema, listen and obey. Let it change your heart and your mind. Let it transform how you live. When he was asked what is the greatest commandment, Jesus answered this, The first is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. There's always time to turn back, to listen better, and perhaps in doing so, we will find peace and our nation will be restored. Amen. So now let us sing together more love to thee, O Christ, number 453 in your hymnal. If you'll join me in the back of the hymnal number 881 as we affirm our faith together and there 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 and there
There we go. We're back, back on the right camera. Um, not sure why it keeps doing that. I have checked a few things, but thank you for your patience as we uh, continue to wrestle technology and um, <laughs> try to uh, try to iron out some of the different issues. Um, just a few announcements this week. Uh, this next coming Sunday will be a special communion Sunday. Special because it's going to be different than we've been doing. Uh, what we've been doing is having the whole of the service and the liturgy on uh, Facebook Live, and then we've invited people to come and receive elements that have been blessed. This week, we are going to try something different. We are going to have a um, modified, you know, shortened a little bit Facebook Live service, and then we will invite everyone to come up to the church, and we will have a similar setup, more of a kind of structured um, table or altar set up outside. And when everyone who um, has been coming uh, arrives, we will do a um, communion liturgy outside. Um, and I'll have a mask on, but I'll stand behind the table and then we will have the elements ready to be received. So you'll come and you'll space out, but you'll be outside together and we'll hear the communion liturgy. You'll be able to respond at the appropriate um, respond times. We'll have uh, the liturgy printed on pieces of paper that you can pick up. Um, but we're going to do that live um, together in person and outside. Uh, we will still um, broadcast this on Facebook Live if you want to participate from home. What we're going to do is we'll have this set up for the first part of the service, and then we'll We'll go outside, there will be a pause, and you can um, pick that back up from outside, but it'll be on Facebook Live and YouTube um, later. So we're excited to try that. It may not work, the timing may be off, but I appreciate your flexibility trying something new. I think um, it will be a good experience to, to hear the communion liturgy read in person and to be able to respond to those pieces and to have communion together in person as we do the liturgy together. Also, um, with that, an exciting announcement is uh, Emily and Stevie will be up here at the church for extra incentive for you to come. Um, they will not, um, they'll be distant away from everyone. You won't be able to hug and hold and kiss the baby, not yet at least. Um, we're looking forward to when you can do that. But they will be up here, and Emily will um, hold the baby up so everyone can see her. Um, but we're excited to, to have you all see Stevie in person. We will also try and um, make our rounds to people who can't come or um, have not been coming so that we can drop off um, either communion elements or just drop off something special and, and let you see Stevie through um, through, through your front door or on your porch or however that'll work. So we'll be in touch for how that can work. I think that's all the announcements I have for this week. I hope um, that you have a good week this week, uh, that, you are, um, that you stay safe, that you, um, that you are, uh, feel loved, and that you know that God is walking with you through this week. So hear this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve.